sana kwa mzee karibu sana Mungu akubariki um, uh, pengine njo sasa tu um, mumesikia right from uh, Thursday we had a Panabas conference Siku ya Alhamisi tumekuwa na kongamano la Barnabas. It was a very very important conference. Ilikuwa ni kongamano ambalo lilikuwa ni la muhimu sana. We were revolutionized. Tuliweza kupata kubadilishwa. They impacted our lives. Mafunzo haya yameweza kuguza maisha yetu. It is something that will take us 5 6 years down the line ni kitu ambacho kitatuendeleza yapata miaka mitano sita and the people that are uh, they were giving us the word na baadhi ya watu ambao walikuwa wanatupatia neno is with us here mmoja wao yuko pamoja nasi is not a stranger here yeye si mgeni mahali hapa um, i don't know whether this is your second third time being here sije kama ni wakati wako wa more more than that. Oh anasema ni zaidi si hata mara ya pili ni zaidi kuwa mahali hapa. And therefore I thank God for Reverend Dan Carver. Kwa hivyo ninamshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kasisi Dan Carver. He started ministering when he was 23. Alianza huduma akiwa miaka 23. He became a pastor. Alifanyika kuwa mchungaji. And uh, up to now he is still pastoring na hadi wa leo bado yeye yungali anachunga how many years are those sijui ana umri ngapi lakini ni miaka mingapi hizo uh, he has really served the lord hakika yeye amemtumikia bwana and we thank god for him tunamshukuru mungu kwa ajili yake i would want to sit under the feet of uh, such like guys ningependa kuketi chini ya miguu ya watu kama hawa because they have something kwa sababu wana kitu that i have not gotten kitu ambacho sijakipokea they have gone places wameenda sehemu not in terms of geographical features si katika sehemu ya hapa ardhi hapa nchini no la hacha. but the lord has enabled them to go to certain areas lakini mungu kwa neema yake amewezesha kukwea katika viwango fulani the lord has dealt with them mungu ameweza kukabiliana nao and especially him the lord has dealt with him na hakika huyu mungu ameweza kukabiliana naye na kumfinyanga and i thank god na nashukuru mungu that whenever you want to be counseled ya kwamba wakati ambapo unahitaji kupokea ushauri do not allow to be counseled with some body who is below you usiruhusu mtu anayekupa ushauri awe ni mtu wa kimo cha chini kuliko wewe but yearn for that person lakini tamania yule mtu who has gone ahead of you ambaye amekwea mbele zako he has seen things that you have never seen uweza kupitia mapito ambayo wewe hujapita and so church we are so privileged na kwa hivyo kanisa tuna fursa nzuri to have this man of god uweza kuwa na huyu mtu mtumishi wa Mungu he is one of the people that really bombarded us with a lot of words ni mmoja wa watu ambao waliweza kutupatia lishe nzuri la neno church shall we be upstanding kanisa ninaomba tuweze kusimama kwa maguu yetu as we usher in the man of god napomleta mtumishi wa mungu reverend dan cover kasisi dan cover all the way from usa kutoka kule amerikani amen amina Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Hey. Have, have I seen you before? Je, nimeshawahi kuwaona hapo awali? I think this is my fourth time to your church. Nadhani huu ni wakati wangu wa nne hapa kanisani. The first three times. Mara ya kwanza tatu was in a building a, a temporary shelter just here. <laughs> Basi ilikuwa katika jengo ambalo lilikaa nikana kwamba halijamalizika hapa hapa. Your pastor invited me to come and speak in a Wednesday night prayer gathering. Basi mchungaji wenu alinialika kuja kunena katika mkutano wa siku ya Jumatano. I'm so thankful that God has preserved us together. Kwa hivyo ninashukuru Mungu ya kwamba Mungu ameweza kutuhifadhi pamoja. 
I have been a pastor for 48 years. Nimekuwa mchungaji kwa miaka 48. And I want you to know that I want to be wise when God is finished with me. Basi ningependa mweza kutambua ya kwamba ningependa kuwa mwenye hekima wakati ambapo Mungu amemaliza nami. I will know it's time to stop preaching. Nitajua wakati wa kukoma kuhubiri umefika. I will know it's time for me to stop preaching when I'm dead. Basi nitajua wakati wangu wa kuacha kuhubiri kumefika kikomo wakati ambapo nitakuwa nimekufa. But as long as there is breath in my lungs. Lakini mradi bado kuna pumzi ndani yangu. I want to declare the word of God. Ninataka kutangaza neno la Mungu. Can you say amen? Sema amina. I want to thank Bishop Nataka kumshukuru askofu for entrusting me with this pulpit. Waweza kunikabidhi na kuniamini na madhabahu haya. He is a pastor and I am a pastor. Yeye ni mchungaji na mimi ni mchungaji. And I know as well as you know pastor. Basi na that we guard our pulpit. Na anajua na vile ninajua ya kwamba tunatupasa kuyalinda madhabahu. I will not allow just anyone to stand in my pulpit. Mimi sitaruhusu tu mtu yeyote kusimama madhabahuni yangu. And so being jealous of this pulpit. Kwa hivyo kuweza kuonea wivu madhabahu haya. I say thank you for entrusting me with this moment. Kwa hivyo ninasema asanti kwa kuniruhusu kutumika katika madhabahu haya. Now I want to you may be seated by the way. Basi jameni naomba muweze kuketi chini. I want to remind you of something you already know. Ningependa kuwakumbusha jambo ambalo tayari mwalifahamu. Sometimes God reveals things and God uses us to reveal new things to you. Wakati mwingine Mungu anatufunulia mambo na pia anatutumia kuweza kuwafunulia mambo mapya kwenu. Sometimes God uses us to stir up the gift of God that is already in you. Wakati mwingine Mungu anatutumia kuweza kuuisha kipawa ambacho Mungu amekabidhi ndani yako. And what I want to speak to you about today kile lile jambo ambalo ningependa kunena nanyi siku ya leo is to stir up what is already in you. Kuweza kuchochea kile tayari kiko ndani yako. In Acts chapter in the book of Acts chapter 1 to be using other scriptures tutakuwa tunatumia maandiko mengine but i want to remind you that jesus was here on earth lakini ningependa kuwakumbusha kwamba yesu alikuwa hapa duniani while he was here he lived and he died and he rose again basi alipokuwa mahali hapa aliishi akakufa na akafufuka tena after his resurrection he remained on earth for 40 days na baada ya kufufuka kwake alibaki hapa nchini hapa duniani kwa siku 40 his last words to his disciples maneno yake ya mwisho kwa wanafunzi wake you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you kwamba mtapokea nguvu wakati roho mtakatifu atakapokuja juu yenu and you will be witnesses to me in jerusalem and judea and samaria to the end of the earth nanyi mtakuwa mashahidi wangu katika jerusalemu na katika uyahudi wote na samaria hata mwisho wa inchi now when he had spoken these things hiyo ni aya ya tisa akisha kusema hayo while they were watching walipokuwa wakitazama he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight akainuliwa wingu likampokea kutoka machoni pao and as they stood gazing to where he had disappeared aya kumi walipokuwa wakikaza macho mbinguni two men stood by them in white apparel yeye alipokuwa akienda kuzake tazama watu wawili wakasimama karibu nao and they said men of galilee wakasema enyi watu wa Galilaya why do you stand gazing into heaven mbona mmesimama mkitazama mbinguni and they said this same jesus na hawa malaika wakasema huyu yesu who was taken from you into heaven aliyechukuliwa kutoka kwenu kwenda juu mbinguni will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven atakuja jinsi hiyo hiyo mlivyomuona akienda zake mbinguni jesus yes. is coming again yesu anarudi tena turn to your neighbor and say this out loud jesus is coming again ngeuke jirani wako mwambia kwamba yesu yuaja tena this is not a new doctrine basi haya sio mafundisho mapya this has been around many years oh mafunzo haya yamekuwa hayapata miaka mingi i'm not telling you anything new siwaambii kitu kipya 
I am reminding you of something that we have forgotten. That Jesus is coming again. And knowing this, my assignment today is to answer a question. If we know that Jesus is coming again, Kama tunajua ya kwamba Yesu yuwaja tena, then how should we design our lifestyle? Basi ina tupasa na mnagani kuishi. If you knew Jesus was coming back today, Kama ungejua ya kwamba Yesu anarejea siku ya leo, how would you live your life today? Maisha yaku ungeya ishije. I tell you this hivi, that Jesus is coming again. Yesu you tena. Will it be today? Je leo? Will it be next week? Je Will it be in one month? Je I cannot mwana. tell you that. Mimi the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. But when sasa. Jesus ascended to the throne. Lakini yes, the angels of the Lord appeared to the disciples. And they said, Jesus will come back just the way he left. Now, if you know that, then how will you design your life? In the book of Titus, katika kitabu cha Tito, in chapter 2, wa pili, we find some answers to that question. Majibu kat, ya, swali hilo. In verse 11 of Titus chapter 2, wa pili wa kitabu cha Tito, it says the grace of God brings salvation and it appears to all men. Teaching us. The grace of God teaches us. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? It us that we are to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And because of this, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. And then it says we look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. What I want to do is sound an alarm. I, I want there to be a clear sound today. Jesus is coming again. Yesu anarudi tena. So understanding that Jesus will return, the Bible says, lift up your head. And so, what does it mean to lift up our head? I am borrowing five phrases so it will be easy to remember. If we know Jesus is coming again, how then should we live? Number one, we should risk, we should live righteously. Live righteously. Number two, we should risk greatly. Risk greatly. Basi ya tupasa kujihatari, ama kuchukua hatua ya kujihatarisha. So number one, we should live righteously. Jambo la kwanza tuweze kuhishi katika haki. Number two, we should risk greatly. Jambo la pili tuweze kuwa kujihatarisha muno. Number three, we should resolve to endure. Jambo la tatu tuweze kukata kauli kufumilia. So number one, we should live righteously. Jambo la kwanza tuishi katika njia haki. Number two, we should risk greatly. Jambo la pili tuweze kujihatarisha muno. Number three, muno. we should resolve to endure. Jambo la tatu tuweze kukata kauli ya kufumilia. Number four, we should anticipate great rewards. Jambo la tatu, tu, jambo la ne, tuweze kutazamia taji kuu. Anticipate great rewards. And then number five. Jambo la tano. 
we should expect a grand reunion. Basi tuweze kutarajia kuunganishwa na Bwana katika njia kuu. Now I know that you're taking notes. Najua mnaandika yale na sema. And that does my heart good as a teacher. Na hiyo inafanya vyema moyoni mwangu maana mimi ni mwalimu mzuri. Wenda hujayapata yote matatu. Lakini unapo ninapoendelea kuzungumza utayapata. Jesus is coming again. Yesu anarejea tena. And if we know that Jesus is coming again, the question is this. Na kama tunajua ya kwamba Yesu anarejea, swali ni How then should we design our lives? Je, tutapangaje maisha yetu? How should we choose to live as the, as, uh, in the knowledge that Jesus is Tuta, coming again? Tutachagwaje kuishi tukiwa na ufahamu Yesu anarejea? Number one, we should live righteously. Jambo la kwanza ya pasa tuweze kuishi katika njia ya haki. Now in Titus chapter 2, katika kitabu cha Tito mlango wa pili, we read that that uh, we read about in verse 13 the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Basi tuliweza kusoma katika aya 13 tukilitazamia tumaini lenye baraka na mafunuo ya utukufu wa Yesu Kristo. In the words just previous to this. Basi mandeno ambayo yako kabla ya haya. The Bible says we are to de- deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Basi Biblia inatuambia kwamba ila pasa tuweze kukataa ubaya na tamaza dunia. We are to live soberly. Na tuweze kuishi kwa kiasi. Righteously. Na haki and godly in the present age. Na utaua katika ulimwengu huu wa sasa. And so we should live righteously if we know Jesus is coming again. Basi atupasa tuweze kuishi katika njia ya haki tukiwa na ufahamu ya kwamba Yesu anarejea tena. Now I am a very positive person. Basi mimi ni mtu ambaye ninamaanisha. I am always looking for something positive in people. Basi mimi huwa ninatazama ama nakutafuta kitu chema katika watu. I like the positivity of the word of God. Basi ninapenda mambo ya kutia moyo katika neno la Mungu. The word of God is not a no gospel, it's a yes gospel. Basi neno la Mungu sio injili ya la lakini ni injili ya ndio. And I want to focus on the positive aspects of the gospel. Nami ninataka kuweza kulenga sehemu ya, 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 ya sehemu ya kufurahia ya injili. However, having said that, there are, some warnings. Hayo, there are some warnings that Jesus gives. Basi kuna ilani ambayo Yesu alipatiana. In Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. Katika Mathayo mlango wa 7 aya 21 hadi 23. Not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven Sia kila mtu aniambiaye bwana bwana ataka ingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni bali ni yeye afanyaye mapenzi ya baba yangu aliye mbinguni Many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name Wengi wataniambia siku ile bwana bwana hatukufanya unabii kwa jina lako Have we not cast out demons in your name Na kwa jina lako kutoa pepo And have we done many not done many works in your name? Na kwa jina lako kufanya miujiza mingi. In verse 23 he says then I will declare to them. Aya 23 ndipo nitakapowaambia dhahiri. I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness. Sikuwajua ninyi kamwe ondokeni kwangu ninyi mtendao maovu. Now this is where I find Jesus drawing a fine line in the sand. Basi hapa ndipo ninapata Yesu anaweka mpaka na kusema The people who prophesy watu ambao walitoa unabii the people who cast out demons watu ambao walikemea mapepo the people who do wonders watu ambao wanafanya miujiza they are the ones that do the will of god hao ndio ambao wanafanya mapenzi ya mungu but jesus gave a warning lakini yesu akapatiana ilani he said ilani. you can do the will of god akasema mnaweza fanya mapenzi ya mungu but not be the will of god lakini msiwe mapenzi ya mungu he wants us to more to do more than just do the will of God. Yeye anataka tufanye zaidi ya kufanya mapenzi ya Mungu. But he wants us to live a lifestyle that complements the gospel that we preach. Basi lakini yeye anataka tuweze kuishi maisha ambayo inatia nguvu kwa injili ambayo tunahubiri. This is one thing I appreciate about your bishop. 
basi hili ndilo jambo moja ambalo nashukuru kwa ajili ya askofu wenu he may not know this wenda sijue jambo hili but i have watched his life many years lakini nimetazama maisha yake miaka mingi i don't know how many years we have been coming to kenya sijui ni miaka ngapi tumekuwa tukija nchini kenya he preaches the gospel yeye anahubiri injili he believes in miracles yeye anaamini katika miujiza he has seen the miracle ameona miujiza we just heard a testimony in the other service about the miracle working power of god basi katika ibada ya pili tumesikia ushuhuda kuhusu nguvu za mungu zitendazo miujiza there have been demons that he's cast out yeye kuna mapepo ambayo ameyatoa he has done the will of god amefanya mapenzi ya mungu can you say amen semeni amina he has done the will of god amefanya mapenzi ya mungu but there's something i like about him lakini kuna kitu ambacho napenda juu yake him this yesterday nilimwambia hivyo jana i want to say it publicly nataka kusema hadharani brother bishop i like your spirit basi askofu pita napendezwa na roho yako because when i'm near you kwa sababu nilipokujua i sense that not only do you do the will of god basi maana nilitambua kwamba haufanyi tu mapenzi ya mungu but i sense that you live the will of god lakini nikahisi ya kwamba unaishi mapenzi ya mungu ya kwamba wewe ni mapenzi ya mungu and so doing the will of god kwa hivyo kufanya mapenzi ya mungu and being in his will are two different things na kuweza kuwa katika mapenzi ya mungu ni mambo mawili tofauti so the people jesus is referring to in this portion of scripture kwa hivyo wale watu ambao yesu anataja katika sehemu hii ya maandiko are thinking that those who prophesy ne wale ambao wanatoa unabii those who cast out demons wale ambao wanakemea mapepo those who do wonders in his name wale ambao wanafanya miujiza katika jina lake those people think wale watu ambao wanadhani those outer deeds will give them credit with god ya kwamba katika kazi yote itaweza kuwa kufanya bwana awapende but what the lord is looking for lakini kila ambacho bwana mungu anatafuta anatafuta yule mtu wa ndani the inner life yule mtu wa ndani is a life of righteousness yale maisha ya haki I just preached on this in my home church. Basi nimehubiri kuhusu hii kule kanisa la nyumbani. The Bible says this. Biblia inasema hivi. That those who call on the name of the Lord believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Wale ambao wanalitia jina la Bwana wakimwamini Bwana wataokolewa. Those who believe wale ambao wanaamini shall be saved. Wataokolewa. What does it mean to believe? Je, inamaanisha nini kuamini? First of all admitting your sins basi inamaanisha kuweza kukiri dhambi zako secondly calling on the name of the lord jambo la pili kulitia jina la bwana believe that he died on the cross amini ya kwamba alikufa pale msalabani believe that he rose again amini ya kwamba alifufuka tena and invite him into your heart uweza kumwalika moyoni mwako but in order to prove to the world lakini ili uweza kudhihirisha kwa ulimwengu ya kwamba wewe ni mkristo ambao umeokoka cross the threshold cross the threshold basi kwenda move into a new room basi wewe ingia kwa kiwango kipya move into the kingdom of god ingia katika ufalme wa mungu salvation is wonderful basi wokovu ni wa ajabu we just heard that 22 people this week were brought to the kingdom of god because of the results of the new church that we just heard tu ya kwamba watu 22 waliweza kuokoka kwa sababu ya injili ambayo imepigwa pale i should i believe the lord deserves a hand clap for that basi naamini ya kwamba bwana anastahili kupigiwa makofi kwa ajili ya mio hizi 22 but this is not the end for 22 people lakini huu sio mwisho kwa hawa watu 22 this is just the beginning huu ni mwanzo kwa ajili yao hallelujah hallelujah kwa bwana it's moving into jesus ni kutembea na kuingia katika Yesu. And if you believe that Jesus is coming soon. Na kama unaamini kwamba Yesu yuarejea hivi karibuni. And the Bible says you will live righteously. Basi Biblia inasema ya kwamba tuishi maisha ya haki. Number 2 jambo la pili if you know jesus is coming again kama wewe unajua ya kwamba Yesu yuaje tena it motivates us to risk greatly basi inatutia motisha kuweza kujihatirisha kujihatarisha muno risk greatly kuweza kujihatarisha muno in matthew chapter 25 katika mathayo mlango wa 25 jesus gave the parable of the talents yesu akatoa mfano wa talanda you know this well mnajua usemi huu vyema one man was given five talents mmoja akapewa talanda tano and he returned five more na yeye akarejesha tano zaidi 
And the master said, "Well done, good and faithful servant." One was given two talents. Mwingine akapewa mbili. And he doubled it and returned two more. Na kaweza kujumulisha na akarejesha mbili zaidi. And the master said, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Na Bwana akamwambia, "Umetenda vyema, mtendakazi mwema na mwaminifu." You know the story. Mnajua hadithi hiyo. You know this parable. Mnajua medhali hii. One was given five talents. Mmoja alipewa talanda tano. And he added five more. Na yeye akaongeza nyingine tano. He doubled the investment in his life. Yeye aliongeza aliongeza kuegeza katika maisha yake. One with two talents. Mwingine akapewa mbili. A returned the same amount. Na akarejesha zingine mbili. And gave two more. Na akapea na akaleta mbili zaidi. He received the same reward. Na akapokea thawabu ile ile. Well done good and faithful servant. Oh mtenda vyema mtendakazi mwema mwaminifu. That means inamaanisha that when the, the investment came wakati kuwekeza kulipokuja the return to the master basi yale faida kwa bwana was not 10% kwa asilimia kumi haiko asilimia msini haiko mia moja but the return was 200% lakini faida ilikuwa ni asilimia mia mbili and because it was 200% na kwa sababu ilikuwa asilimia mia mbili the principle is basi kanuni ni not how much you have been given sio kiwango kile ambacho umepewa lakini kile ambacho unafanya na kile ambacho umepewa lakini kulikuwa na huyu wa tatu na huyu ambaye alikuwa na kuwekeza kwa tatu yeye alikuwa muoga kuweza kujihatarisha na kwa sababu yeye alikuwa muoga kujihatarisha the master called him a wicked servant oh bwana kamuita mtendakazi muovu as a matter of fact it says he will be cast It says cast the unprofitable servant servant into outer darkness. Basi anasema yule ambaye ni muovu akatupe kule nje kwenye giza. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mahali ambapo kutakuwa na kilio na kusaga meno. So the purpose for God's investment in us. Kwa hivyo kusudi la Mungu kuwekeza bipawa ndani yetu is that we take what has been given to us ni kwamba tuweza kupokea kile ambacho tumepewa and so that investment back into the kingdom of god tuweza kuwekeza rasilimali hiyo katika ufalme wa Mungu why are you asked to give every sunday ni kwa nini mnauliza kupeana na kutoa kila jumapili why are you asked to give offerings ni kwa nini mnauliza kutoa sadaka it's not so that this church can become rich si eti kanisa hili tajirike it's not so that leadership can rise above everyone else si eti ya kwamba viongozi waweza kuinuka zaidi ya kila mmoja wao you don't give for them wewe hautoi kwa ajili ya viongozi. You don't give for the church. Wewe hautoi kwa ajili ya kanisa. God has invested something in you. Mungu amewekeza rasilimali ndani yako. You give because of the kingdom of God na we, within you. Na wewe unatoa kwa sababu ya ufalme wa mbinguni. You understand what I'm saying. Mnaelewa kile ambacho nasema. God wants you to take what you have. Mungu anataka ukamate ulicho nacho. And risk greatly with it. Na uweze kujihatarisha mno nacho. 1983 mwaka wa 1983 I took my first mission trip to Africa. Nilichukua safari yangu ya kwanza nikitumia meli kuja Afrika. I was taken to what was then known as Zaire. Nikapelekwa kwa ile nchi ambayo wakati ule ilikuwa inaitwa Zaire. It's now called the DRC or the Democratic Republic of Congo. Wakati inaitwa Congo. I preached on a Sunday morning. Nikahubiri siku moja Jumapili asubuhi. That afternoon they took us to a river. Basi alasiri hiyo tukapelekwa kwenye mto. And we there ate a picnic lunch, an Tuk- outing, a gathering, a whatever you call it. Basi wakatupeleka pale kuweza kuwa na mankuli ya mchana ilikuwa ni kana kwamba tumepelekwa out. When we finished our dinner. Tulipomaliza chakula chetu. The missionary told a story. Basi huyo missionary akatuambia hadithi in 1939 mwaka wa 1939 missionary by the name of JW Tucker served in the Belgian Congo basi ule missionary kwa jina JW alihudumu pale Congo in 1964 there was a Simba rebellion 
mwaka wa 1963 kulikuwa na uasi and during the rebellion a mob captured JW Tucker and tied him to a tree na wakati wa uasi baadhi ya waasi walimshika huyu missionary wakamfunga kwenye mti they started beating him with sticks and clubs wakaanza kumpiga kwa biboko na fimbo they hit him with broken bottles wakampiga na ama wakamdunga dunga na chupa ambazo zimepasuka na wakampiga pia mangumi it took them beating him for 45 minutes when he died walimpiga kwa dakika 45 kisha akakata roho when he was dead alipokuwa amekufa the mob threw his body in the back of a truck basi wakachukua mwili wake wakatupa kule nyuma ya gari and they drove 75 kilometers and dumped his body in the Bomokondi river basi wakachukua huo mwili wakaweka kwenye gari wakaenda kilomita 75 wakaitupa kwenye mto and in a moment of time his body was being devoured by crocodiles na kwa kufumba na kufumbua macho mwili wake ulikuwa ni lishe kwa crocodiles you see he risked Mamba. everything Unajua alihatarisha kila kitu. He did what I'm talking about. Yeye alitoa kila ambacho anazungumzia. He risked greatly. Yeye alijihatarisha mno. But I am here to tell you this. Lakini niko hapa kuambia hivi. That investment is not the end of the story. Ya kwamba hiyo kuwekeza huko sio mwisho wa hadithi. Hallelujah to the lamb of God. Hallelujah kwa Bwana. When something bad happens to you. Wakati kitu kibaya kinakutendekea. And you don't understand why God has permitted it. Na wewe hautambui ni kwa nini Mungu ameruhusu. I am here to tell you this. Niko hapa kukuambia hivi. That with God ukiwa pamoja na Mungu your tragedy is not the end of the story basi hali hiyo mbaya sio mwisho wa hadithi yako hallelujah to the hallelujah You see the Bomakandi River. Unajua ule ule mto wa Bomakandi flows through the Nganga region that was inhabited by the Mangbetu people. Basi inaenda sehemu ambayo watu ambao wanakaa kule ni watu wa Kibantu. When J.W. Tucker's body was thrown to the river. Wakati mwili wa huyu missionary J.W. ulipotupwa kwenye mto. There was no Christian church in that region. Hakukuwa na kanisa lolote la Mungu katika eneo hilo. Previously CT Stud had gone there. Basi hapo nyuma CT Stud walikuwa wameenda pale. The African Inland Mission had gone there. Ah uh, ile African Inland Mission walikuwa wameenda pale. But there seemed to be no church risen rose up. Lakini hadi wakati ule kukuwa kanisa ambalo lilikuwa limechipuka pale. During the Simba Rebellion. Lakini wakati wa uasi wa ambao unaitwa wa Simba Mangbeto leaders requested a police officer to come basi watu waliuliza pola afisa wa polisi aje and the man's nickname was the brigadier basi na jina la kiutani ambao alikuwa ambatia huyo mtu ilikuwa ni brigadier he moved from isiro to the nganga region basi yeye alitoka kwao akaenda kule eneo la nganga and he became their chief police officer na yeye akafanyika kuwa askari wao mkuu you see god knows how to put his plan together unajua mungu anajua jinsi ya kuunganisha mpango wake pamoja for this police officer named the brigadier basi kwa huyu askari ambaye alikuwa ame Bwana jina likiutani brigadier was from Isiro where JW Tucker lived. Yeye alitoka mahala Sirio alikuwa anaishi. In the previous months katika mwezi ambao ulikuwa umepita JW Tucker had witnessed to the brigadier. Basi huyu JW alikuwa amemshuhudia huyu brigadier. The brigadier gave his life to Jesus Christ. Na huyu brigadier akawa amepeana maisha yake kwa Kristo. So when he went to the Nganga region Kwa hivyo yeye huyu brigadier alipoenda katika eneo hilo la Nganga he understood a custom Yeye aliweza kuelewa a desturi iliyokuwa mahala pale In that culture ambaye ilikuwa katika tamaduni the, the 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 people believed this ambaye watu waliamini hivi that if the blood of a man would flow in their river kama damu ya mtu ingetiririka kwenye mto wao they would listen to whatever he had to say basi wangesikia jambo lolote ambalo alitaka kusema and the brigadier the police officer na huyo askari brigadier stood up among the people alisimama kati ya watu and day after day he would say this na siku baada ya siku angesema hivi there was a man 
kulikuwa na mtu who let his blood shed ambaye ali ruhusu damu yake kumwagika and his blood flows in the bomakandi river oh na damu yake inatiririka katika mto wa domakandi and the people said what was his name na watu wakauliza jina lake lilikuwa ni nani and he said jw tucker na akasema jw tucker jw tucker gave me a message to give to you na jw tucker alinipa ujumbe niwaletee said there's someone who gave his life's blood ya kwamba kuna mtu ambaye alipeana damu yake much higher than jw tucker haya ni juu kuliko jw tucker his name is jesus christ jina lake ni yesu kristo and you will listen to him na nyinyi mtamsikia because one of his followers blood flows in your river kwa sababu mmoja wa walio kuwa wafasi wafasi wake damu yake ilitiririka kwenye mto huu began to be saved watu wakaanza kuokoka and to this day na hadi siku ya leo the church of jesus christ kanisa la yesu kristo is strong in the nganga region oh li na nguvu katika eneo la nganga why is it strong kwa nini liko na nguvu because somebody knew that jesus was coming back again kwa sababu kuna mtu ambaye alijua yesu yuaja tena and he was willing to risk everything he had na yeye alikuwa tayari ku Jehatarisha kila kitu alichokuwa nacho. If I take every bit of money that I have. Nikichukua pesa zote nilizonazo and I give it to you. Na uweze kukupatia. Or I invest it in an investment agency. Ama niweze kuweka katika uh, agency ya kuwekeza pesa. I may or may not get a return on it. Wenda nipokee faida ama nisipokee. As a matter of fact I may lose it all. Wenda hata nipoteze yote. And if I lose it after I've invested it then it's gone. Basi nikipoteza baada ya mimi kuegeza itakuwa imeenda. But when you invest in the kingdom of God. Lakini unapoekeza katika ufalme wa mbinguni. Come here with a word from heaven. Nimekuja hapa na neno la mbinguni. When you invest in the kingdom of God. Unapoekeza katika ufalme wa mbinguni. When you sow yourself. Wakati ambapo unajipanda katika ufalme wa mbinguni. I am here to give you a money back guarantee. Niko hapa kuweza kukupatia hakikisho. What you give to God. Ya kwamba kile unachopatia Mungu He will give back to you. Atakurejeshea. Good measure. Kile kipimo kizuri. Ambacho kimesindiliwa. Kimetingizwa. And running over. Na hata kinafurika. That's what the word of God. Basi hilo ndilo neno la Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. Yesu anakuja tena. Live righteously. Wewe ishi maisha ya haki. Risk greatly. Wewe jihatarishe muno kwa ajili yake. Haleluya kwa Kristo Yesu. But I want you to I want to go on. Nataka kuendelea. Resolve to endure number 3. Jambo la tatu kata kauli kuvumilia. In other words keep on keeping on. Katika maneno mengine endelea kuendelea. When you feel like quitting wakati ambapo unahisi kukata tamaa in my country katika nchi ambako nimetoka when it's, when it's someone feels like quitting wakati ambapo mtu anajihisi kukata tamaa we use the phrase i'm going to throw in the towel atunatumia uh, tamko hili ya kwamba anatrusha taweli you use that phrase here if i if Ama, you hear me amekata tamaa uh-huh. mkisikia nikisema If you hear me say Mkisikia nikisema I'm going to throw in the towel. Ya kwamba ninakata tamaa. Means I'm going to quit. Nina maanisha ya kwamba ninaacha. It means I've had enough. Nina maanisha kwamba yamenitosha. Means I have no fight left in me. Nina maanisha kwamba hakuna nguvu za kupiga vita tena. Means I'm tired. Nina maanisha nimechoka. It means I'm not going to carry on. Nina maanisha kwamba sitaendelea na safari. I want you to hear this. Ninataka msikie hii. It is not time to throw in the towel. Sio wakati wa kukata tamaa sasa. Because the angel said. Kwa sababu malaika alisema. As surely as you see him go. Jinsi ambavyo ameenda kibwana He shall come back in like manner. Atarejea katika mtindo huo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you feel like throwing in the towel. Na wakati ambapo unahisi kukata tamaa. When you feel like saying I quit. Wakati unapojihisi kusema ninaacha. Like that's enough. Unapojisikia kusema imetosha. God sends a fat white 
preacher from America. Basi Mungu amemtuma mhubiri mweupe kutoka America. To you. Weza kukwambia. It's not time to quit. Si wakati wa kukata tamaa. It's not time to give up. Wao ni wakati wa kusonga mbele. It's not time to say no more. Si za wakati wa kusema imetosha. It's not time to pick up or throw in the towel. Si wakati wa kukata tamaa. It's the time to pick up the towel. Ni wakati wa kujichukua somebody's feet. Na wakati wa kujianga serve somebody na kutia moyo mtu put the towel around your loin basi wewe jifunge taulo kiuno the towel na the sh- be a servant basi kuwa mtumishi wear the towel wewe vaa taulo pick up the towel like jesus wewe chukua taulo kama yesu because jesus is coming back kwa sababu yesu yuo aja tena hallelujah hallelujah i want to tell you a story acha niwaambie hadithi In 1952 on July the 4th mwaka wa 1952 tarehe 4 mwezi wa 7 a young woman by the name of Florence Chadwick stepped into the Pacific Ocean basi mwanamke fulani kwa hilo jina ametaja ni ngumu kwangu aliingia katika bara Pacific the reason she was in the ocean na alipokuwa pale kwenye bara hiyo she was intending to swim 30 kilometers across a canal that belo- that began in the Catalina Island and ended on the California coast. Bas yeye lengo lake lilikuwa ni aweze kuogelea kilomita 30 kutoka Carolina mpaka ngambo ile nyingine. This was the same woman who had swam the English Channel and swam back. Bas huyu ni yule tu mama yule ambaye alikuwa ame ameogelea ame kule katika channel ile ya Kiingereza na akarejea. On that day in California. Bas siku hiyo kule California. The water was cold. Maji yalikuwa ni baridi mno. And the fog had rolled in. Na hata umande ulikuwa umekuja. And she could hardly see the boats in her party. Hangeweza hata kuweza kuona Amerikebu. Several times the sharks had to be driven away with rifle fire. Basi uh, uh, wakati mwingi zile nyangumi walikuwa wametoroshwa. For 15 hours Chadwick swam before she asked to be taken out of the water. Basi kwa masaa 15 huyu ama aliogelea kabla hajauliza aondolewe kwa maji she was less than one kilometer away from the california coast ilikuwa imebakia kilomita moja afike kwenye alitaka kufika but she said you must take me from this water lakini akasema yapasa munitoe kwa haya maji later when she had gained her strength baadaye baada ya yeye kurejesha nguvu the press asked her why she had quit so close to her goal basi wana habari wakamuuliza ni kwa nini ulikata tamaa ukiwa karibu kufikia lengo lako and she gave this answer na akatoa jawabu hili it was not the cold water sio maji baridi ambayo alisababisha it was not for exhaustion that caused me to fail sio uchovu ambao ulisababisha akate tamaa she said it was the fog ili alisema ilikuwa ni umande she said i'm not excusing myself akasema mimi sijitolei hivi sababu but she said i lost sight of my goal lakini akasema nilipoteza kuona lengo langu she said if i could have seen the land akasema ni kama singeweza kuona a uh, lengo langu if i could have seen the land kama ningeweza kuona mahali ambapo ningemaliza mwendo are you hearing what i'm saying je mnasikia yale ambayo anasema don't give up less than a kilometer from heaven usikate tamaa kama imebaki kilomita moja kufika lango la mbinguni now is not the time to give up si wakati wa kukata tamaa We've had a pestilence. Tumekuwa na janga moto. It has taken some of your family members. Basi baadhi ya watu wenu wa jamii walikufa katika jangwa hili. A very close preacher friend of mine more than one has died from covid. Basi ninajua moja si hata moja zaidi ya rafiki yangu mmoja wa ubiri wamekufa na ugonjwa wa covid. I want you to hear me. Ngependa munisikize. If it had not been for God. Kama sio Mungu. When I received COVID. Wakati ambapo COVID ilipo nigonga. They diagnosed the positive uh, code COVID test on me. Basi mimi nilipimwa wakapata kwamba nina virusi vya COVID. But I am here by the grace of God. Lakini niko hapa kwa neema ya Mungu. To stand in Pepha Church today. Naweza kusimama kwenye kanisa la Pepha siku ya leo. In this place. Hapa Dandora. To tell you this. Naweza kuambia jambo hili. My eyes are still on the goal. Ya kwamba macho yangu bado yamelenga lengo. 
When I was sick, and I could not hardly get out of my chair, and I began to wonder if this was the end of my life, I began to think about Africa. I began to think about black faces. I began to think of what God had started in me. And I felt like God said to me, this is not the end. This is a brand new beginning. Readjust your life. Readjust your thinking. Because I'm going to use you more now than I ever have before. I did not let the fog of sickness destroy me. I did not throw in the towel. I did not say this is enough. I did not say I'm not going to do this anymore. Because I looked through the fog. I looked look through the negativity. Oh, mimi nilipenya hata yale mambo ya kinyume. I saw the finish line. Na nikaona mahala lengo langu la kumaliza. One of these days soon. Hivi punde. The trumpet will sound. Oh, tarumbeta itapigwa. The dead in Christ shall rise. Na walio kufa katika Kristo watakufa. We which are alive and remain shall be caught. Na wale ambao tuko hai tutakutana nao kwenye hao. Keep on keeping on. Oh, endelea kuendelea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Yeye ambaye atavumilia hadi mwisho ataokolewa. Consider this present suffering basi wewe zingatia haya mateso ya leo of this present time ya ulimwengu huu wa leo they are not worthy to be compared haya sahihi kulinganishwa with the glory that shall be revealed oh, in us oh na utukufu ambao bwana atatufunulia hallelujah to the lamb hallelujah kwa bwana kondo i'm teaching something specific in these seminars basi nimekuwa ninafunza kitu maalum katika semina hii we all love the end product tunapenda mwisho i love the end product mimi napendezwa na mwisho wa jambo i love it when i read how god used people in the word of god mightily basi mimi ninapendezwa wakati ninaposoma jinsi ambavyo mungu alitumia watu but with the exception of two or three characters in the bible ni When you see God using someone powerfully. Unapoona mtu akitumia mtu katika njia kuu, it's because they have been faithful in the process. Ni kwa sababu wamekuwa waaminifu katika harakati hiyo. So you must be committed to the process God takes you through. Basi ni charity kujitoa kwenye harakati ama mwendo ambao Mungu anakupitikia if there is no process kwa sababu kama hakuna ule mwendo there will be no product basi hakutakuwa na matokeo so no matter what the fog is kwa hivyo licha ya umande ambao unajaribu kukusudia no matter what the resistance is licha ya ule ule uzito wa kukupinga no matter what comes against you licha ya yale mambo ambayo yanakuinukia don't quit Usikate tamaa. Don't give up. Usikate tamaa. Never 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 give up. Usikate tamaa. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Je, mnasikia yale ambayo anasema? A few years later the swimmer I told you about. Basi miaka michache baadaye huyu mama ambaye ni wa kuogelea. She said I'm going to do this. Akasema ninaenda kufanya hivi. She got in that water again on the coast of California. Akaingia kwenye maji pale kwenye ufuo wa bahari wa California. It was a clear day. Siku ambaya ilikuwa iko sawa. And she swam the 30 kilometers. Na akaogelea kilomita hizo 30. If you have failed kama wewe umeshindwa hapo awali get up and try again oh simama na ujaribu tena the failure is not falling basi kushindwa sio kuanguka are you hearing what i'm saying mnasikia yale ambayo anasema the failure is not falling yani kushindwa sio kuanguka the failure is not getting up basi kushia kushindwa ni kutosimama if you are down kama uko chini you are down for a moment wewe uko chini kwa muda tu but i command you lakini ninakushukuru in the name of jesus of nazareth katika jina la yesu nazareth you have fallen down ya kwamba wewe ambao umeanguka chini simama Jesus is coming again. Yesu anarejea tena. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one in 
in the knowledge that Jesus is coming again. Jambo la kwanza katika ufahamu wa kwamba Yesu anarejea tena. Number 1 we are to live righteously. Jambo la kwanza ya tupasa kuishi maisha ya nyahaki. Number 2 we are to risk greatly. Jambo la pili ya tupasa tuweze kujihatarisha muno. Number 3 we are to resolve to endure. Jambo la tatu ya pasa kukata kauli kuvumilia. And number 4. Jambo la nne. Hear me. Nisikizeni. Anticipate great rewards. Basi tazamia thawabu kuu. Anticipate great rewards. Tazamia in the very last chapter of the very last book of the Bible, basi katika kitabu cha mwisho, mlango wa mwisho kwenye Biblia, in chapter 22 verse 12, mlango wa 22 aya ya 12, Jesus reminds all believers the things he the thing he wants them to remember. Basi Yesu anawakumbusha yale mambo ambayo anataka wakumbuke. He says, Behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. If you are faithful in the process, you can anticipate great rewards. Not immediate rewards. Sio thawabu ya I'm talking about everlasting eternal reward. God help me to keep faithful in the process. In my denomination, in my denomination, the name Victor Plymeyer is a well-known name. He was a pioneer missionary who felt the call of God to go to China and Tibet. He went there in 1908. And he labored for the Lord for 16 years before he went. He won one person to Christ. Na yeye alimfanyia Mungu kazi miaka 60 kabla hajaongoza mtu mmoja kwa Kristo. He was there 16 years before one convert came to Christ. 16. 16. Miaka 60. Miaka 60 kabla mtu mmoja hajamkubali Yesu kuwa bwana na mwokozi. By his 19th year he had established a church. Mwaka wake wa 90 alianzisha kanisa. But in that year his six-year-old son and his wife died from smallpox. They died within a week of each other. The cemetery refused to allow him to bury his wife and son there. So he bought a small plot of land on a hillside outside of town. It was in the middle of winter there. And he only had enough strength to dig one grave through the frozen ground to bury both his wife and his son in. I can only sympathize with that. I can't even imagine the level of grief he experienced. But once again, that was not the end of the story. For you see, the Bible speaks to this. In Mark chapter 8, verses 34 and 35. Mark chapter 8. Whoever desires to come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. And follow me. Notice that it says take up his cross and follow me. We do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ because it's easy. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ because it's right. 
Tunamtumikia Bwana Yesu Kristo ni kwa sababu hilo ndilo jambo sawa. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Je, mnasikia yale ambayo anasema? You don't follow Jesus because it's easy. Basi haumfuati Yesu ni kwa sababu ni rahisi. You follow Jesus because it's right. Unamfuata Yesu ni kwa sababu hilo ndilo jambo lililo sawa. You see here's Victor Plymeyer on the side of the hill digging a grave. Hebu angalie huyu missionary Victor ako pale kwenye mlima anajaribu kuchimba kaburi la kumzika mke na mtoto. Once again that was not the end of the story. Lakini huo haukuwa mwisho wa hadithi. In 1956. Mwaka 1956. Mr. Plymeyer died without ever knowing the effects of his wife's son and death. Basi huyo Victor akafa pasipo kujua madhara ambayo alitokana na mke wake na mtoto in 1988 mwaka wa 1988 the church that victor plymeyer had planted had closed its doors and someone else wanted to reopen in that same location basi kanisa ambalo huyo missionary alikuwa amefungua lilikuwa limefungwa milango yake na kuna mtu mwingine ambaye alitaka kufungua kanisa mahala pale pale but when they asked the local government for permission to use it as a church walipouliza uh, serikali ya mtaa kuweza kutumia jengo hilo kama kanisa they refused to allow them to open another church because there was no proof that the property and the building erected by Victor Plymeyer had ever been used as a church basi wali no proof hakukuwa na thibitisho ya kwamba kanisa lile ambalo lilikuwa limejengwa na Victor Plymeyer lilitumika kama kanisa But the townspeople and the the government officials knew the truth. Lakini watu wa serikali na wale watu wa mtaa pale walijua ukweli. So the son of Victor Plymeyer. Kwa hivyo mtoto wa kiume wa Victor Plymeyer went to the denomination's headquarters. Akaenda kwenye makao makuu ya dini hiyo. They could find no deed for the church property. Hawakuweza kupata cheti cha mali hiyo ya kanisa. But in the records lakini katika rekodi yao they found the deed for the cemetery plot in China on the side of the hill lakini waliweza kupata cheti cha shamba lile ambalo mke na mtoto wa Victor aliwalizika and the son of Victor David went to China basi na huyu kijana wa huyu missionary akarejea uchina and he carried the deed to the cemetery na akabeba cheti cha shamba la mahala pa kuzika presented it to the officials na akapatiana wale maafisa and said here is the official deed that my father was here na akawaambia hiki ndicho cheti cha kuonyesha baba yangu missionary alikuwa hapa and based on the deed of a, of a grave site na kwa sababu ya cheti hiki cha mahala pa kuzika they were required to give permission to build a church basi walistahili waweza kupatiana idhini ya kulijenga kanisa is anybody hearing what i'm saying che kuna mtu ambaye anafuata hadithi hiyo if i would have had my way kama si Plymeyer's wife would not have died. Basi Plymeyer yeye mke wake hangekufa. Plymeyer's son would not have died. Basi Plymeyer kijana wake hangekufa. But you see there's a God in the universe. Lakini unajua kujua kile anachofanya. You may not understand it. Wewe uenda usielewe. You may not feel good about it. Wewe uenda usisisi vyema. It may be painful to you. Inaweza kuwa ni chungu kwako. Tears may flow from your eyes. Wenda machozi yanakutindika. It will cause you to bend your knees and pray and cry out to God. Inakusababisha upige magoti na ulilie Mungu. But I am here to tell you this. Lakini niko hapa kukuambia hivi. When it happens. Wakati ambapo inatendeka. God is not finished yet. Mungu bado hajamaliza. God is not finished yet. Mungu hajamaliza. Jesus is coming back. Yes, Don't throw in the towel. Usikate tamaa. Don't quit. Usikate tamaa. Because God always has the last word. Maana Mungu ndio ambaye ana useni wa mwisho. God always has the last word. Mungu kila wakati ndiye ana useni wa mwisho. Hallelujah kwa mwana kondoo wa Mungu. And then number 5. Jambo la tano. If you know Jesus is coming again. Kama wewe unajua ya kwamba Yesu anarejea tena. Set your heart on reunion someday weka andaa moyo wako kwa ajili ya kukutana na Yesu tena someday there will be a reunion with all of our loved ones oh siku moja kutakuwa na kuunganika tena na 
sisi sote. I don't know if you have these in Kenya. Siji kama muna desturi hapa Kenya. But in my country, lakini kule nimetoka nchini kwangu. We have what we call family reunions. Basi kuna kila ambacho tunaita mkutano wa jamii. When a family grows up, wakati ambapo jamii imepanuka imekuwa kubwa. They begin to establish family units of their own. Basi wana wanajenga vituo vya jamii vya kibinafsi. Every so often they will have a family reunion where they gather everyone together just to, to enjoy each other. Basi kutakuwa na kipindi wakati ambapo kila mmoja anatoka kula alikoenda wanakusanyika pamoja kama jamii kufurahiana pamoja Are you hearing what I'm saying? Je, mnasikia yale ambayo anasema? Some day there will be a grand family reunion. Oh, siku moja kutakuwa na kuunganika pamoja kwa jamii. With the church of Jesus Christ. Oh, wa kanisa la Yesu Kristo. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah kwa mwanakondo. There will be a family reunion. Kutakuwa na kuunganika pamoja kwa jamii. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Je, mnasikia yale ambayo anasema? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah kwa mwanakondo. Now when Jesus told his disciples. Yesu alipoambia wanafunzi wake, Meet me in the upper room for the last supper. Mkutane nami kwenye chumba cha juu tuweza kula mankuli ya mwisho. Jesus talked about the cup. Yesu akanena kuhusu kikombe. You see this was a Passover meal. Unajua ilikuwa ni chakula cha Pasaka. And in the Passover meal na katika chakula cha Pasaka there were four cups that they drank from. Kulikuwa vikombe vinne ambavyo walikuwa wanakunywea. It symbolized the four promises of Exodus chapter 6. Ambayo inaadhirisha inaairisha ahadi zile ambazo zimo katika kutoka mlango wa sita. You read it this afternoon. Basi wewe utajisomea baadaye. Exodus 6 verses 6 and 7. Basi kutoka mlango wa sita aya sita na saba. But let me just condense it for you. Basi wacha niweza kuiweka pamoja kwa ajili yako. In the Passover meal, katika uh, mulo huo wa Pasaka, cup number one talks about uh, I will bring you from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Basi kikombe cha kwanza kinamaanisha nitawatoa kwenye uh, kwenye ile hali ya, ya, ya wa Misri. Cup number two. Kikombe cha pili. I will rescue you from bondage. Nitawaokoa kutoka kwa mateso. Cup number three. Kikombe cha tatu. I will redeem you. Nitawakomboa. And cup number four. Na kikombe cha nne. I will take you as my people and be your God. Nitawachukua kama watu wangu nami niwe Mungu wenu. That's what the four cups of the Passover represent. Bas hivyo ndivyo vikombe vinne vya Pasaka vilikuwa vinamaanisha. When Jesus had the last Passover celebration with his Yes alipokuwa na Pasaka ya mwisho na wanafunzi wake. The Bible says Biblia inasema that they prayed waliomba they sang a hymn wakaimba wimbo and then they went out. Alafu wakaenda nje. There was no fourth cup when Jesus took communion for the last time. Hakukuwa na kikombe cha nne wakati ambapo Yesu alishiriki pamoja na wanafunzi wake. They prayed, waliomba, they sang a hymn, waliimba wimbo, and they went out. Na wakaenda nje. Now there's a reason for this. Basi kuna sababu ya hii. There was the cup. Kulikuwa na kikombe but there was no fourth cup lakini hakukuwa na kikombe cha nne can you believe this je mnaweza waamini you understand this je mnaamini symbolically jesus was saying something basi kwa 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 ishara yesu alikuwa anasema jambo there will come a time alikuwa anasema kutakuja wakati we will be gathered together wakati ambapo tutakusanyika pamoja and i will drink the cup with you in my future kingdom nami nitanywea kikombe katika ufalme wangu nao kuja. He did not drink the cup in the upper room. Yeye hakunywea kikombe cha nne katika chumba. The fourth cup was left out. Kikombe cha nne kiliwachwa nje. Jesus was symbolically saying. Yesu alikuwa anamaanisha. I will come back again. Nitarejea tena. And I will drink the fourth cup with you. Na nitanywea kikombe cha nne nanyi. The cup of security. Oh, kikombe cha usalama. The cup of looking in oh my God. Hey, Mungu wangu. The cup of looking to the future. Kikombe cha kutazama siku za usoni. I will drink it with you. Yes, akasema nitanywea pamoja. Katika ufalme wangu nao kuja. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah kwa mwana kondoo. Glory to God. Utukufu ni kwa Mungu. Now I want you to consider this as I close. Ninataka mweza kutafakari haya ninapoenda kufunga. Understanding that Jesus is coming again. Weza kuelewa kwamba Yesu yuarejea tena. 
on the day of Pentecost, siku ya Pentecote, there were 120 kulikuwa na watu 120 tearing in Jerusalem in the upper room. Ba walikuwa wanasubiri pale Jerusalem kwenye chumba cha juu. The Bible says Biblia inasema they were all together wote walikuwa pamoja in one place katika sehemu moja in one accord katika umoja they were all together in one place walikuwa wote pamoja kwa chumba kimoja they were all together in one place walikuwa wote pamoja kwa chumba kimoja are you hearing what i'm saying yeye mnasikia ala maana sema on that day siku hiyo Peter preached the gospel. Petero akahubiri injili. The Holy Spirit was poured out. Oh, Roho Mtakatifu akamiminwa juu yao. 3000 people were saved. Watu 1300 wakaokolewa. Another time 5000 were saved. Wakati mwingine watu 1500. The Bible says that God added daily to the church such as should be saved. Biblia inasema ya kwamba Mungu akaongeza kwa kanisa kila siku wale ambao walistahili kuokolewa. Think about this my people. Hebu waza kuhusu hii. On the day of Pentecost, siku ya Pentecost, they were in one place, one room. Walikuwa kwenye chumba kimoja. The church was in one room. Kanisa ilikuwa kwenye chumba kimoja. Under one roof, chini ya paa moja. In one accord, katika umoja. But on that day, lakini siku hiyo, never, hakuna, has the church gathered together under one room, one roof again. Kanisa halijawahi kukutanika chini katika nyumba moja na pa na chini ya pa moja I was driving here this morning Nilikuwa ni kiletwa hapa asubuhi And on my left mkono wangu wa kushoto I heard worship music Nikasikia wimbo wa kuabudu On my right Oh mkono wa kulia I heard worship music Nikasikia jimbo za kuabudu Down the street Oh chini ya barabara I heard worship music Nikasikia watu wanaabudu A church under that roof Kanisa likuwa pale chini. A church under that roof. Oh, kanisa liko chini ya hiyo pa. Kanisa liko chini ya hiyo pa. The church is not all under one roof. Kanisa haliko sote chini ya pa moja kwa sasa. But there will come a day. Lakini siku yaja. When the church will be all under one roof again. Wakati kanisa litakuwa chini ya pa moja tena. It is not now. Na sia sasa. But it is soon to come. Oh, ni hivi punde. Jesus is coming again. Yesu anarejea tena. And the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema. There will be a marriage supper of the lamb. Kutakuwa na mankuli ya mwana kondoo. I can only imagine what that will look like. Ninaweza tu kutafakari yale ambayo itakuwa. I don't know what they will serve. I sijui ni kitu gani ambacho walicheza. But I know they will serve a uh, Kenyan pineapple there. Lakini najua watapeana nanasi za kikeni. Hallelujah. <laughs> Since the day of Pentecost. Tangia siku ya Pentecost. The church has never been under one roof. Kanisa halijawahi kuwa chini ya pa moja. He's coming again. Lakini nyao wakati waje. There will be a marriage supper of the land. Kutakuwa na mankuli ya mwana kondoo. There will be a heavenly choir. Kutakuwa na choir ya kimbinguni. There will be rejoicing. Kutakuwa na kumsifu Mungu. There will be joy. Kutakuwa na furaha. There will be dancing. Kutakuwa na kucheza. And your worship team will be in the dance team. Oh na kundi hili la kuabudu litakuwa kwenye in the choir. I'll be in the choir. There will be plates. And together we shall drink the fourth cup together. We shall drink the fourth cup together. We shall drink the fourth cup together. The cup Jesus did not drink in the upper room kule chumba cha juu the marriage supper of the lamb oh katika manguli ya mwana kondoo at the marriage supper of the lamb katika manguli ya harusi ya mwana kondoo my country katika nchi yetu tell you this kule america jesus yes oh is coming again anakuja tena How then should we live our lives? Basi yatupasa tuishi maisha kwa mtindo gani? This same Jesus. Huyu Yesu that you see going away. Ambaye mnaona akipaa akienda shall so come. Atarejea hivyo hivyo. In like manner. Katika mtindo huo. As you have seen him go. Jinsi ambavyo mmeona akikwea. Jesus. Yes is coming again. Anarudi tena. My question is, 
Are you ready? Je uko tayari? Are you ready? Uko tayari to meet him. Kukutana na yeye. Will he come today? Kuja leo? He may. Anaweza kuja leo? Will he come tonight? Anaweza kuja usiku wa leo? He might. Anaweza. Will he come before you get home? Je, atakuja kabla hujafika nyumbani? He could. Anaweza. Will he come before you eat your next meal? Je, anaweza kukuja kabla hujakula mankuli yako yanayofuata? That just may happen. Inaweza kutendeka tu hivi. I don't know when. Sijui ni lini. I don't know all the details. Sina zile habari zote kamili. I know what the Bible says. Lakini najua yale ambayo Biblia inasema. Coming again. Anakuja tena. And with that knowledge. Na tukiwa na ufahamu huo. I ask you the question. Ninawauliza swali. Are you ready for his return? Je, uko tayari kwa kurejea kwake? See while he was here. Wakati alipokuwa mahali hapo. He lived a sinless life. Yeye aliishi maisha ambayo hayakuwa na dhambi. He died a horrible death. Yeye alikufa kifo kibaya. He shed his blood. Ali mwaga damu yake. He took the keys of death hell and the grave away from the devil. Yeye alichukua funguo pale kaburini mbali na shetani. So that you could have eternal life. Ili uweze kuwa na uzima wa milele. How do I become saved? Je, nitafanyikaje kuwa mwokovu? Admit that I'm a sinner. Niweza kukubali ya kwamba mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Know that Jesus rose from the dead. Niweza kujua ya kwamba Yesu alifufuka kwenye wafu. Invite him into your heart. Wewe mwalike moyoni mwako. Heads are bowed. I want to pray with you. Hebu tuinamisha vichwa vyetu ningependa kuomba. This room this morning. I am reminding you Jesus is coming again. Ninawakumbusha ya kwamba Yesu anarejea tena. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Baba, tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya mwanao Yesu. We thank you for your grace. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya neema yako. We thank you for your strength. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya nguvu zako. Thank you for your power. Asante kwa ajili ya nguvu zako. We thank you for your authority. Asante kwa ajili ya mamlaka yako. Father, there are people that are crying out to you right now. Baba, kuna watu ambao wanakulilia sasa hivi. We know you hear their cries. Tunajua wewe unasikia kilio chao. And we say this in our heart. Bana tunasema haya moyoni mwetu. I am a sinner. But you are the savior. Lakini wewe ndio mwokozi. I ask you to come into my heart. Naomba Bwana ukanene na moyo wangu. I believe in the Lord Jesus. Uje moyoni mwangu maana naamini Yesu Kristo. I receive you as my savior. Nakupokea kama mwokozi wangu. And I give you thanks that you have saved me. Nami ninakupa shukurani ya kwamba umeniokoa. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazareth. Amen. Amina. And Amen. Na amina. So I say to you. Kwa hivyo ninawaambia as I hand this microphone back to pastor. Ninapopatiana kipaza sauti hiki kwa mchungaji. Jesus. Yesu is coming again. Anarejea tena. Can you lift your right hand? Inua mkono wako wa kuume juu. Say it with me. Urudie nyuma yangu. Jesus. Yesu is coming again. Yesu anakuja tena. Hallelujah. Mungu na wabariki. tena. Yesu anarudi tena. Mtukufu haleluya. Tumbariki tumwinue. Sifu Bwana anarudi tena. Anarudi tena Yesu anarudi tena Utukufu haleluya Tumbariki tumwinue Sifu Bwana anarudi ukiwa katika hali hiyo nataka uweze kujiuliza kweli uko tayari kwa sababu kweli ni huu anarudi tena walitabiri miaka mia saba ya kwamba atazaliwa watu wakadhani hatazaliwa na sako tayari kukutana na Mungu wako. Kweli una hakika ya kwamba Yesu anarudi tena. 
tunamisha vichwa vyetu ninajihisi ya kwamba kuna wapendwa ambao wamekata tamaa katika safari hii najisikia hata wananuia kurudi nyuma ama wameanza mienendo ya kurudi nyuma kuna wengine wamekuwa na shingo ngumu hawataki jambo lolote kuhusu Mungu aguzwi atisiki hata kidogo aweze kutisika ashtuki amekuwa nam kwa vitu za Mungu na tunaweza kuwa na visababu vingi vingi tu kabisa nikana kwamba Yesu akutapata dhiki nikana na kwamba hiyo andiko haiko na tunakuwa na visababu vingi na hiyo inatuzuia kutokuendelea mbele kutokumwamini kuishi maisha ya haki na kuna wengine wajakata uamuzi wa kumfuata Yesu nikana kwamba Yesu arudi tena tukiwa tumeinaisha vichwa vyetu tungependa tuombe na pengine kwa njia moja ama nyingine ungesema tumishwe bwana nikumbuke kwa maombi tulikuja tukutana na Yesu atukuja kutimiza sheria ya Jumapili tulikuja tukutane na Mungu wetu na Bwana amenena ikiwa uko hapa kwa njia moja ama nyingine nyanyua tu mkono wako juu tunapoenda kufunga ibada hii unahitaji maombi ulikuja ukisema Bwana nena nami zungumuza nami Ebu nyanyua mkono wako popote ulipo. Ngina anasema, "Bwana ninataka uniokoe." Sante kwa hiyo mkono. Nyanyua tu mkono juu. Sante. 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 Nataka kumuita mtumishi wa Bwana aje aombe. Kwa hivyo ningependa hao ambao wamenyanyua mkono pale tu upo, wewe simama. Simama tu. Wewe ndio umejua jinsi umekuja kukutana na Mungu. Wengine wanasindikiza watu tu awaji kukutana na Mungu. Simama tu popote ulipo. Simama. May I kindly ask Reverend Dan just to come and pray over these people. Simama tu. Tumishwa Bwana anakuja. Asante. 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 Roho wa Mungu yuko hapa. Jesus is coming again. We are not playing gimmicks. It's not a joke. It's not a club. Jesus is coming again. Are you ready? How are you going to meet with him? Utakutana naye namna gani? Itakuwa ni wewe peke yako, sio jamii, sio marafiki. Ni wewe peke yako. Thank you Jesus. Na kwa hao ambao wamesimama iwapo wewe hujaokoka na ungependa uokovu nyanyua mkono juu wewe ambao umesimama hapo haujaokoka na ungependa kukutana na huyu Yesu ni wale ambao wamezaliwa mara pili sante kwa hiyo mkono sante kuja naye karibu kuja naye karibu na wengine ambao hata pengine umekaa chini na unataka uokovu Yesu anarudi tena anarudi 
Thank you, Jesus. Sante Bwana. Sante Bwana. Kanisa ebu tuwe katika hali ya maombi Rudia maombi haya Sema e yesu Naja kwako Mimi ni mwenye dhambi Unisame dhambi zangu Kwanzia leo Nita kufuata Nita kufuata Unishike mkono. Unishike mkono. Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu. Kwa uko. Kwa uko. Ondo wa jina langu. Ondo wa jina langu. Katika kitabu cha shetani. Katika kitabu cha shetani. Na uandike jina langu. Na uandike jina langu. Katika kitabu cha uzima. Katika kitabu cha uzima. Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu. Kwa kuniokoa. Asante. Ninakataa shetani. Ninakataa shetani. Na ujanja wake wote. Ujanja wake wote. Na nguvu zake zote. Nguvu zake zote. Naja kwako Yesu. Unioko. Asante. Nimeamini. Nimeamini kwamba nimeokoka. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Ninamweka Diana mikononi mwako. Bwana umemuokoa leo. Oh utukufu na sifa ni zako. Utukufu na sifa ni zako Mungu. Bwana umshike mkono. Bwana umuongoze. Bwana umlinde. E baba, umpe nguvu, umpe neema ya kuacha mengine yote ya dunia hii na weze kufuata. Awe tayari kukufuata. Awe tayari kukutana nawe hewani utakaporudi. Katika jina la Yesu aliye mwana mwokozi tumeomba. Amen. Kanisa shangilia. Haleluya. Shangilia vilivyo. Haleluya. Haleluya. Father, we thank you. Tunaomba. Tunakushukuru for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank oh, thank you for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that has brought another soul into the kingdom of God. Thank you, God, for your grace. For each one that's standing in this place. Yes. I speak the name of Jesus over them. Whatever their situation, whatever the problem, whatever the issue is, I speak the name of Jesus over this place. May your May your peace rest upon them. Oh, Whatever is causing turmoil in their life. I pray that it Hallelujah. would be resolved. Whatever is the pain in their lives. Let it be taken away. Whatever the issue is. May they come out the other side looking like Jesus. Father, you will deliver some from. You will deliver some through. But you will deliver them. I pray for each one that your will would be accomplished. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Shangilia bwana kwa maombi. Tumeshukuru sana kwa ujumbe huu. Na huyo ni mzee amenizidi kwa miaka, ametumika zaidi ya mimi. Lakini anahubiri kama kijana, anamutisha ya kuhubiri. Amekabiliana na zile mambo ambao wewe pengine unadhani hajakabiliana nazo. Lakini bado namutisha ya kuhubiri Yesu. 
na anataka kuona watu wakiingia katika ufalme. Uliza mwenzako, je, unatarajia Yesu kuja mara ya pili?